hello hello welcome back to fftl inspired if this is your first time here kindly consider subscribing here it's all about food fashion and craft travel and lifestyle in this video i'll be showing you how to make this simple romper outfit it, this is the back of the outfit and i made it uh, a wrap style i made it in wrap style for the upper part as you can see there's an opening there um, the waist is connected with an elastic and this is the front of the outfit and it is sleeveless as you can see it's really easy to make and the back is connected with belt so we'll quickly get into this I have two different start points horizontally and vertically so from my start point vertically is one inches below the start of the paper so I measured one inches down and now measuring my hip line which is eight inches then measuring my crotch line so i measure at two point this is the second point my crotch line is about 10.5 so i measure at two different points to have a straight line and next i am measuring three inches downwards from my crotch line that is my thigh line so three inches downwards so like i said i measure at two different points so i can have a straight line next i'm measuring is my m line so from my start point to my m line is 21 inches you can increase yours if you want it to be a, uh, to be longer so this is just slightly below my knee and depending on your measurements and your height so roll that out straight and so i have my waistline my hip line my crotch line now my thigh line and my m line I'm sorry the lines are a bit faint I didn't realize when I was recording next time I'll ensure to use a marker so now I'm measuring my hip so my same hip measurement I'll take that on my hip line that is my hip divided by four take it on the hip line the tie line and now on the waist line so hip divided by four and then rule a straight line across so with these measurements I'll go to my waist now my waist divided by four I'll measure that mark that out and i'll be using a three inches allowance for gathers that's for fullness but i would recommend that you use like five or six inches as much as you can for more fullness and also i added one more inch for sewing allowance so with that now i'll go to my hip so for my hip i only need to add one inch sewing allowance on my crotch now i'll measure my hip that is my hip measurement divided by four that is my hip is actually divided by four is 10. so 10 divided by four is 2.5 2.5 is the crotch extension i've used there and now i have on the diagonal i increased it by i went up by two inches to cover out my crotch and this is what i have now so i'm just covering that in better and so from my crotch extension, my total crotch now makes up 12.5. Uh, so 12.5 divided by 2 is 6.25. That is my midpoint. I'll mark that out. So that's a measurement. I'll take it on my M line and on my waist line so I can get my midpoint. So measure that at the waist also and rule out the line. So connect these three points and that's our midpoint. So on my tie line, I'm just going to measure my tie measurement divided by four. Then take that measurement on each side of my midpoint. Do that on the M line as well. And now we'll connect that together to draw out our pants. And at the M line, I went in by one inch on both sides just to kind of give a shape to my pants do that also because i don't want it to just be flared or open so on this side on the inner side i connected to the tie line on the other side i connected to the hip line so with that now from that point i'm measuring one inch outwards for my sewing allowance while on the crotch curve i'll use half inch sewing allowance So half inch sewing allowance on the crotch curve, then one inch sewing allowance on every side, including the upper part. So the upper part, this one inch is what we'll be using to join the upper and lower parts together. 
and that one inch is where elastic will sit will sit in so use my ruler to connect everything and don't forget one inches on one inch on all the sides and i'll connect my hip to my four inches allowance on the waist that's three inches for fullness and one inch for sewing allowance then also connect the hip to the M. So, so guys, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are yet to. Thank you so much for your comments and your likes. Ensure that you leave them down below for this video. So once again, one inch, one inch on all the sides and half inch on the curve curve. So I cut that out and this is the front pattern of our pants, which is the lower side of our room part outfit. So next we're working on will be the upper part of our room part outfit. And I'll start by measuring my shoulder line one inch, my arm hole line that's nine inches below and my bust point line, which is two inches away from that 11 inches and my waistline, which is 16.5 but with but I added one inch allowance for connecting and that is 17.5 inches. Like I said earlier, I measure at two different points so I can get a straight line. So 16 plus one, that's 17.5, sorry, 16.5 plus one, 17.5. And so rule my straight lines and, and that's my shoulder line. Next I'll be drafting is the neck so go in 3.5 inches below and horizontally mark four inches so um roll that out connect them and on the diagonal line go in by two inches and from that folded part to the neck i'll just do a curve to create my neck pattern so this is the neck of the outfit my shoulder that is back to back is 15 divided by 2, that's 7.5 inches. So mark that. On the arm hole line, I'll take my bust divided by 4, mark that and include 1 inch sewing allowance. The next I need is my waist divided by 4, add 3 inches for gathers or fullness and 1 inch plus for sewing allowance. Like I said, please or kindly feel free to add like four to like five to six inches more for more fullness as if you want so connect the waist to the ham hole and now on the arm hole line i also measure 7.5 inches to connect to the shoulder line so roll that out straight and then connect the neck to the shoulder line and that is my shoulder slant so from the shoulder line to the arm hole line now i have eight inches left so 8 divided by 2 is 4. On that 4 inches point, I'll go in by 1 inch. So this is what will... This is, I'll create a curve through this to draft my arm hole. So just pass a curved line through this to the edge of the shoulder. And this is my arm hole. And that is my arm hole line. So my bust divided by 4 plus 1. Waist divided by 4 plus 3 and plus 1. So cutting that out, this is the pattern I have now. And I want to do a little design for the back. So 2 inches downwards first. And from that 2 inches downwards, I will mark about 6 inches. 6.5 inches rather. So you see that opening at the back. This is what I'm trying to create now. So just draw a small curved pattern like the way i'm doing here this creates an opening even with the wrap pattern of the back so i removed the neck piece just to cut out the upper parts now and i'm also cutting out the pants side of the front so after cutting out the front pattern for upper and lower i attach the neck piece back as you can see here so for the back now we need to remove this pattern and you can see the kind of opening we have now so i extend that opening to the other side diagonally to create a continuous curved shape 
and now I'm going to draft the neck of the back so I'll go in by 1.5 inch and from that 1.5 inch I'll create a curved shape to connect with the neck of the heart fit so curve that out and cut it out this is the back of our heart fit where the uh, belt will be attached so I'm going to cut out um, that curved pattern and this is the pattern for our back so we need two pieces of this so I'll cut out one pattern first but for the back arm hole we need to close out the the um, measurement we took from the front so I just draw a straight line to close that up as you can see here that's for the back arm hole the back arm hole and front arm hole are not usually cut the same way so I cut out this pattern and you can see that I didn't cut this on fold so you need to lay out your fabric don't fold it and for the pants part of the back we're going to extend our crotch by 1.5 inch right there and one inch on the crotch length so uh, that one inch extension connected to the waistline as I've rolled out and the crotch extension connected to the M line there so those are the two adjustments we make for the back I uh, also cut that out and this is our back measurements so I flipped the front pattern sorry the back pattern on the upper side I flipped it to cut the other side and when I turn them back now you can see that we have two pieces of the back pattern so when we lay them on each other there is this overlapping that we have and our belt stays at the neck so next I'm cutting is the facing so I cut uh, facing for all for the front and the back so just lay out on a folded fabric take that out and I'll measure two inches round the shape to create my facing so just follow the shape and measure out two inches cut that out and we have the facing for the front that's for the neck if you have any questions please leave them down below we do the same for the back and now we split this into two so we can have two pieces for the back so use pins to hold them together and put the facing and fabric right side to right side that's how we're going to stitch on the sewing machine and for the arm holes i'll be using this bias strip as my facing so also we will sew the crotch line crotch cup this way first for the back as well on the opening we will use the bias strip as our facing before we stitch the facing of the back to that pattern so i'll do all of this and come back to show you guys so this is what i've done this is the front pattern and as you can see i've attached my facing on the arm or which is by a strip and i ironed them for the neck i've also attached my facing and i did a top stitch on the neck pattern after which i pressed down with an iron so for the back arm all i have done the same thing i used bias strip and i attached my facing then i created this belt that i have also added and my facing for the opening so the belt is sitting in between my facing and that opening before i stitch together so the belt is something very easy to make and now we need to determine the center of our back pattern you know we have two pieces now so the way to determine this is to place the patterns on the front and ensure that the sides are uh, rightly placed so with that that's our midpoint so pin that together and then we can have our back piece in one form so with a back piece in one form i can go ahead to stitch all the way down like that to hold it together by one inch and here on the side the one inch in our allowance this is the time we take them in so one inch is one inch allowance on both sides and for the lower part i've also sewn across the crotch like that so i've done that for the front and the back i'll place here i'm placing them on each other to join them together as well so sew one inch on both sides and on the crotch parts we ensure that the crotch aligned for the front and the back 
and then we'll sew from one end side to the other now that i have attached the upper part front and back together i've also done the same for the lower part so now what we need to do is to sew the upper and the lower side together so sew so the top and the pants together so ensure that the right seams the side seams align i like to do that so ensure that they are lined then you hold them with pin to securely hold them then we'll pin around the two fabrics the two sides of the outfit so that is the uh, top side and the pants side of the romper outfit so like i said earlier before ensure that your side seams align open up the seam and ensure that they are placed on each other then hold down with pin round the entire outfit so with that done we'll sew all round as you can see here with one inch showing allowance that we included earlier so take this your sewing machine and take in one inch all round ensure that all the seams are open like that so open all the seams up the side seam the crotch seams open them up um, I've done that here. I've stitched them together. You can see all my seams are open. They are flatly open. So next is to fold this joining at the waist. We'll fold it in. You know we have one inch uh, sewing allowance. So we'll fold this one inch in to form like a half, uh, half inch passage with our elastic. So take this to your sewing machine. You can fold in half and half or quarter and half whatever you want to do but ensure to have enough passage way for the elastic the elastic i'm using is a three quarter elastic it's actually a one quarter elastic yeah so i need uh, like half inch passage way for ease so that's what i'm trying to do here i'll sew this all round also, as you're sewing this, ensure that you open up your side seams. If not, your elastic might be blocked and will not be able to pass through. So open up the side seam and take your time as you stitch through. Fold as you go. And ensure to leave about one inch opening so you can pass in your elastic. Don't forget to open your side seams as you go. So that is done and you can see the stitches. So I folded the lower part on the upper side. You get what I did. So this is my in this is my opening and this is where my elastic will pass through. So my waist is the waist I'm working with is 32, 32. I decided to remove 5. So minus 5 that's 27 inches for the elastic. So pass that in with a pin. So I'll tie that together and also secure the ends on the sewing machine. So then close up that opening that we have and with that our elastic has been passed so next is for us to finish off the facings that we have put so on the armhole and the necklines i will use needle and thread to make some blind stitches around uh, around them and for the m line i'll be using this m glue it's a five over eight m glue and I'm just going to use that fold over the, to fold over the M lines and press down with an iron, very hot iron. So I like to do this for my outfit because of the neat, neatness and ease that it gives, you know. Sometimes I don't like seeing stitches on the 
uh, outside of my outfits. I like how this is concealed and it gives a finished, a beautiful finishing. It's really easy and it stays like I've been using this for my outfits on my outfits for a long time and they don't wash off. I've washed in sewing uh, in laundry machines in I've washed by hand and they, are, they stay very well. So if you can try this, it's very good. So I'll do that on the two side of my pants. And that is it. So you can see it's very neat. There's no stitch lines in and outside. So I've done that on the other side as well. And both of them look so good. So with that now we'll work with our facings. So like I said here, I'll be using needle and thread to make some blind stitches around the armhole and the neckline. So for the neckline, just fold round the neckline and hold down with needle and thread as I'm doing here to create some blind stitches. So these blind stitches will not show on the outside of the outfit. They won't show on the other side of the outfit. You can only see them on the inside and they are very tiny as well. They're hardly noticeable. So do that all around. And here I'm done with the stitches. So my arm all looks very neat. Look very neat. And the neckline as well, you can see, you can't see any stitch line on them. And with that, my outfit is ready. So. So I have my belt to hold the two sides of the back together. You can tie it as a bow and tie it anyhow as I like. It's a very beautiful outfit and you can see that it's really easy to make. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you will try out this outfit. Please don't forget to leave your comments below and questions. I respond to all of them. So thank you so much for watching. Till I come your way again. Bye.